Back here in this country, House impeachment managers accuse the president of believing he is above the law as they lay out their argument that the Senate should remove him from office. His Democratic accusers spoke for nearly nine hours yesterday at the Senate impeachment trial. They argued the president directed an effort to cheat in the 2020 election and hold up military aid to Ukraine. The president and his lawyers dismissed the Democrats' arguments, which will continue today for day two. They insist Mr. Trump has done nothing wrong and will be acquitted. Nancy Cordes is on Capitol Hill for us, where she listened to the testimony all afternoon and into the evening. Nancy, good morning. So what do we expect from day two? Good morning. Well, they have been trying to organize all of this evidence into bite-sized pieces. They'll continue again today. So categories like the firing of the U.S. ambassador or the withholding of U.S. aid to Ukraine. As these House managers try to convince the Senate that the president himself was behind an unethical scheme, though it's not clear they've changed any minds yet. The president went to extraordinary lengths to cheat in the next election. In granular detail, the seven impeachment managers laid out all the ways the president, his aides, and his lawyer sought to pressure Ukraine. The July 25th call warrants our close scrutiny. It presents significant and shocking evidence of President Trump's corrupt intent. I would like you to do us a favor, though. These words will live in infamy. They also expressed frustration about the evidence they were refused. The State Department sending a first-person cable is an extraordinary step. Would you like me to read that to you right now? I would like to read it to you right now, except I don't have it, because the State Department wouldn't provide it. But if you'd like me to read it to you, we can do something about that. It all, they argued, added up to abuse of power, warranting removal from office. His administration was quietly placing an illegal hold on critical military aid to support our friends. Democrats called the arguments masterful. This presentation was one of the most powerful court appearances that I have ever seen. Many Republicans called it repetitive. President Trump is somehow fixing to steal this next election. I think that's a crazy conspiracy theory, but really their whole case is built on that. And he came back to it over and over and over. The president's legal team took notes from a nearby table, readying its defense for later this week. We will be putting on both an affirmative case in defense of the president, but also pointing out uh, some of the errors in the case that they presented. Democrats are still pushing for testimony from new witnesses, like former National Security Advisor John Bolton. Ambassador Bolton categorized the corrupt scheme, the pressure campaign, as a, quote, drug deal. I think that Ambassador Bolton was trying to send, send us a very powerful message. Some Republicans say they're open to witnesses if the Bidens testify, too. That trade is, is not on the table. Speaking to voters in Iowa, former Vice President Joe Biden himself rejected the idea of a witness swap, saying that his testimony would only turn the trial into political theater. Democrats have two more days for arguments, then the defense gets its shot, and clearly the president himself is paying a great deal of attention because he set a new record for tweets yesterday, 142 of them, including dozens on impeachment. His lawyers continue to insist that he will be acquitted soon, as early as next week, one week before his State of the Union address. And the timing's so interesting. He's certainly paying attention. Thank you very much, Nancy.